X-Men, the official game, review. I guess the licensed game wasn't as catchy and they wanted to and they wanted to make sure that you didn't think that this was one of those bootleg games of X-Men that you've been hearing so much about. Anyway, set between the second and third movie, stuff happens. Basically, the mutants go back to Alkali Lake and they discover that something was down there that they hadn't expected, and I'm not going to give away what that is. And that's basically it. You meet some mutants and you go to some locations and there are you know, various things from the comics, which makes you wonder why this so distinctly uses the movie continuity, because the stuff from the comics is just kind of thrown in there. Movie fans are not going to understand what it is. Comic fans are just gonna, you know, oh, yeah, that's that from, you know, the comics. But it doesn't really have any context, you know, so it, it doesn't have any impact. It's not like you again. It's just like, hey, what's this? What's this organization? Who's this mutant? What's going on here? And it really doesn't have any impact. Overall, the game really smacks of being, you know, stuck in between. It's kind of that story that you don't really need to know. It's kind of like Enter the Matrix, you know. You don't need to know what's going what's going on in this game to fully appreciate the movies. So, whatever happens has to be something that you can skip over and you can tell, you know. You do sometimes feel like you're really making an impact, and you're making a difference, but on the whole, you don't really. It's just kind of holdover, you know. The movie, this game came out the same year as, you know, X-Men 3, so it was basically just, you know, see, there's a game of it too when the movie came out. The only three mutants you can control in this are Wolverine, Iceman, and Nightcrawler. Wolverine is extremely basic hack-and-slash third-person action game. There is nothing particularly interesting. You can do a couple of combos. Other than that, it's basically just a quick attack, a heavy attack, and an attack that's like meant to send the enemies back. I guess it's when you're crowded or something. It's not terribly useful. Various different enemies have different methods for you to stun them. You know, you have to do different combinations or you have to do specific strikes. This is good in theory, but in reality, the game throws too many enemies at you when you're Wolverine, and you you wind up trying to... you have to concentrate on one specific type of enemy, whether there's only one of him or there's several of them, and as you do that, the others can attack you. So you spend so much of the time as Wolverine just running away from enemies, trying to get to to get into a good situation where you can attack someone, attacking them, and then running away again. You spend about half the time fighting, running. The game is not very dynamic. It's It's got very rigid controls for the fighting, and it really slows you down, and just takes a lot of the potential fun out of it. Being Wolverine should be fun. It's almost impossible to not make it fun. Basically, the Wolverine levels have you just fighting off a bunch of enemies with your claws, and that's kind of it. You can jump. There's only the one jump. You can't double jump. You can also block, although I never found this useful in the least. And from blocking, you can do rolls. This is far too slow to be useful, because if you're already blocking, and then you try to roll, you're most likely to get hit before you have time to actually roll. You're more... you're gonna get better results just from running away from the opponent. Otherwise, you just lose precious... at least a good second, I'd say, and that's just too much for it to be useful. If anyone is unaware of this fact, licensed games do tend to suck. They're rushed, they're sometimes incomplete, they often have bugs, and they're just, they're short and 
very little new is tried with the games because basically they're trying to pump out a product that lives up to a certain minimal standard within the space of, you know, a too short amount of time, you know, because it's supposed to coincide with, in this case and in many other cases, a movie release. There are very few exceptions to this rule. The old Latin game is one of them. A Latin. The you and you can really tell that this was rushed. There are there aren't really any bugs or such, but there are glitches and a lot of the game is just kind of awkward. One really obvious visual uh, indication that this was rushed is Nightcrawler's jump, which is very it's very clearly supposed to take you further than it does. It kind of just stops halfway and then you start to fall. It's very clear that they almost definitely, would be my guess, initially had a longer jump and then they realized it made the game too easy so they shortened the jump and they didn't have time to adjust the animation. So they just left it like that. The Iceman levels are basically like a simple flight simulator kind of game with again the third person perspective basically and you know complete with a couple of dog fights there are you know basically you just fly around as Iceman you know you glide but it's essentially like flying although the gliding does mean that you have to be careful about your balance you know don't switch up and down too fast and you know, you can you can't quite turn as swiftly, but it works well. You know, it's those levels do tend to be a lot of fun. There are some really cool Iceman levels, pun intended. Basically, Iceman has again three abilities. They all have three basic you know buttons that accomplish some power. Basically, he has a freezing ray or an ice beam, I think they call it, that can be used to freeze things and sometimes they can also be used offensively because there are a lot of people who are really offended by ice. Then he has something called Hailstorm. This is basically an ice missile and it's heat seeking. Stop laughing, I didn't make it up and you fight little raptors made of pure flames that can actually like you know fly around they don't just go off flying in one direction again i i'm not making this up this is in the game and it's actually more fun than it might sound it's completely irrational of course but you know you also fight fire with ice which i'm really not sure how that would really work you know but anyway laws of physics really do not have much of any place in, you know, a lot of current entertainment. So anyway, and his third ability is an ice, a frost shield, I think it might be called, which is hardly ever used at all. I'm not even sure why they, I, I think they may be in theory, they, they theorized we're going to have a lot of use for this, so let's put it in or, you know, it's a cool enough idea. It must have been fun to decide, must have you know, really sucked when they realized they had no use for it. You only use it in the first level, as far as I could, you know, that was the only time I used it anyway. It's, you know, as with Wolverine's block, it's essentially useless. Although with Wolverine's block, I think it's supposed to actually be useless. With Iceman, they just never throw anything at you that you can really block. At least I didn't notice any situations where the block was useful. And then we have Nightcrawler. His levels are some of the most fun. The basic mechanic is a really obvious and lazy and awkward ripoff of Prince of Persia as of the Sands of Time. You know, those, you know, from the game from 2003 and onwards. You can run on walls at least a little bit and, you know, you jump far and grab onto poles, swing on, yeah. And that's, you know, that's part of it. And then there's the addition of teleportation, 
basically you get an indicator on the screen you know and I'm not talking like a little icon I'm talking about in 3D you can tell where you're going to be teleporting to if you press the teleport button then you press the teleport button you teleport there sometimes you teleport so fast that you can't you know if you're like falling off something you can press the teleport button you might be lucky to you know Kurt grabs and teleports to something grabs onto it and you're safe again that's part of it and that's you know that in itself is somewhat fun the combat is really cool basically it's like the first scene of X2 you can teleport behind enemies you can you know and then you have either a punch or a kick attack again you know light attack heavy attack and basically you choose when you're gonna teleport if you're holding down if you're holding down button A and you press the punch button or the kick button you're going to teleport to that enemy and punch him or kick him and if he moves away from you you're gonna teleport to him again and punch him or kick him whether or not you're holding down button A if you press button B and then punch or kick you're gonna teleport to the other side let's say you're here the enemy's here you're gonna go here whether or not, whether he's facing this way or that way, you're going to teleport to the other side of him. And you can press that button as much as you like. You can teleport behind him, in front of him, behind him, as much as you want. Or you can just teleport behind him and then kick him a bunch. And you can really teleport around so much that the enemies will have a hard time even hitting you. Maybe I should also briefly get into healing. Starting with Nightcrawler, since I'm already on him. With Nightcrawler, you have to stand still, you go into this shadow meld thing, you know, he turns invisible, basically, and he heals. And you can just be standing still, if you have the time, and just heal all the way. Once you've healed, if you move, it'll cancel the healing. I'm not sure what happens if you get attacked while, you know, well, I guess it would... Basically, if you stop healing once you've started healing, you have to wait a while for a meter to fill before you can heal again. So you'll want to only use it when you're sure you can be healing for a while, obviously. Iceman just heals over time, and that's really what the other two should do. With Nightcrawler, it happens the same as with Wolverine, which I'm going to get into in a bit. Basically, you have to find points where the game will allow you to stand still. Well, there's no enemies, and there's no countdown or anything and you just have to stand still and wait for him to heal it doesn't take that long granted but it's still just it slows the game down it makes it less dynamic they should have thought of some way where you could do it as you're fighting someone or as you're doing something you know maybe I don't know have some kind of power distribution where you can shift your energy to be used to heal some and there's always some healing going on maybe but you can then shift that energy into your fighting or into your teleportation so you can teleport further or you can attack better something like that you know with Wolverine it might be even worse it's again you know you have to stand still for him to really heal he heals along the way also he has two health bars once the first one decreases it starts healing once the second one decreases and the first one has to be gone for the second one to start going away once the second one goes away he doesn't get that back just by healing you know during fighting so he has to stand still or use the fury getting into the fury in a bit basically again it completely stop the, stops the game and with Wolverine you really shouldn't be standing still you know yeah I channel Christopher Walken for a second there. Basically, the Fury Mode, you fill a meter as you attack a bunch of enemies. Once it's all the way full, you activate it, and it unlocks two new attacks. You know, your punch and your, your light and your heavy attacks are going to be slightly different. The heavy attack knocks the enemy down, you know, stabs him in the chest, you know, like he does in the second movie. That's kind of it it's the fury really doesn't last that long it lasts for maybe five seconds I think you can maybe make it last longer with the upgrades getting into those in a bit and you know for some of the stronger enemies you can waste an entire fury mode on that one enemy the other attack is using the claws really swiftly and that can be kind of 
you know, effective. And as you use Fury Mode, your health will also regenerate, although you can still be attacked by it during that, and sometimes you can even lose more health than you would gain from it if you're not careful, so yeah. The game mechanics has this problem that you see in a lot of games. The enemies can stun you with a very simple attack anytime they hit you. If you're in the middle of a combo, tough luck, you have to start it over, you're going to get hit. They can then do a combo on you while you're stunned. However, if the enemy is trying to do a combo, you might not be able to stop it. And you might be doing a combo as he starts doing his combo, and you can't stop doing your combo and run away before he starts doing his combo, and then he's just going to hit you a bunch and drain a lot of your health. And this makes some of the game really frustratingly difficult, and unnecessarily so. Now, the upgrades, basically, every time you complete a level, you get, or mostly, you get at least one gene for upgrading, and you can choose to upgrade, I think all of them have like five or six, all three mutants have five or six abilities that you can upgrade. The higher the difficulty you complete a level in, the more of the genes you get. I guess if you complete all the levels at the highest difficulty, you can unlock, you know, you can upgrade all the abilities all the way. You can actually tell some with the abilities if you've upgraded them or not. It's not a very long game, and yet it does get repetitive, especially with Wolverine, because there are a lot of levels with Wolverine, because it's easy to do Wolverine levels. And it just, there isn't really anything to it. It's just fighting a couple of different, you know, there are some boss fights. But other than that, as Wolverine, you're just fighting soldiers who are, you know... And, and there are a couple of different ones, but it does get old pretty quick, also because there's such a minuscule range of attacks that you have at your disposal. This uses the voices and likenesses from the movies. And that is a kind of cool, you know, feature. And yes, Alberry is about as, you know, flat and unimpressive in this as she is in the movies. So, yeah. And this sets up the third one reasonably well, although you know, not that much has, you know, I would also say you can essentially play this without having watched any of the movies. Although, you know, there's going to be stuff, it doesn't really explain what's going on at all. You know, it expects you to watch the first and the second movie, or at least the second movie. The graphics are decent. The cutscenes are really blandly done and obviously done in a hurry. It's basically these still comic... It's, there's some comic frame, you know, comic book frames and panels bit, but mostly it's just these... It's a certain form of animation. I'm not an expert on animation, but it's very, very simple. There's not a lot of movement, and that's kind of it. At times, it's so bad, you can't even tell exactly what's supposed to be going on. The in-game graphics, they're reasonable. You know, do remember it's a 2006 game, so you know, don't expect anything better than that. And for that, it's okay. It's not going to blow your mind, and it's not going to leave you completely unimpressed or you know, underwhelmed either. And I suppose that's about it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.